Anthony Cumia was physically escorted out of the comedy cellar after trying to go there to hang out with everybody after the um, Patrice O'Neill benefit that Bill Burr holds. I think we'll let Anthony tell the story, right? Or do we have it? Yeah. Clip it's in from next Reddit. Up. Yeah. Clip from Reddit. Here it is. Um, I'll skip ahead if I have to. This is uh, Bill Burr has Anthony Cumia thrown out of the comedy cellar. This is brand new. Don't, uh, I know it's tough when you see Anthony Kumi is wearing the same exact shirt and everything is exactly the same as episode one was 10 years ago. Let's see what he says. Don't worry. People that are uh, watching and remember what I was doing yesterday after the show, uh, going to see Jimmy Norton at the big, you know, bo- uh, before we go ahead, I'll say this. This is a big part of Kumi, uh, uh, the Kumia, the history of Kumia and the, the um, future of Kumia on Red Bar. This is a milestone. These are one of the milestones that we need. You know, I'm on a mission still. I take breaks from this mission. I take pauses from this mission. Sometimes I work hard on the mission, but I'm in no rush. But I say this, my mission is that I will somehow be involved in the ending of Anthony Kumia. That's what I ultimately want. I want whenever his end is, his obvious end, I want it to have something to do with something I did, even if it means I just nudged someone in the right direction. I want to be a part of his demise. Okay? Um, However, I mean, I could only care about it so much and it's kind of on autopilot now, the demise. And this is one of these milestone moments where you go, Okay, good. Now, can we branch on from this and get this? Because this could work. Listen to this pathetic old count tell this horrendous story. Black pussycat. Loved it. Loved Jimmy. Uh, Hugged my good friend Jimmy Norton. I love him. And uh, we are inseparable. Uh, Had a few drinks. Had a few drinks. Went over to... The Comedy Cellar, which, of course, is the iconic comedian of New York gathering place. Now, last night or the night before last, actually, was the Patrice O'Neill benefit. The Patrice O'Neill benefit. Uh, I was at a couple of them until, well, I became something called persona non grata. Okay, so I think that's last. For those of you who don't know, every year they get together to celebrate and honor the morbidly deceased comedian Patrice O'Neill, who I have a rule with dead guys, too. They're not they didn't die. I don't hold them. uh, I don't regard them as what they were when they died. I regard them as what I think they would be now. So I can't walk around this earth like every other bimbo out there going, oh, Patrice O'Neill, if he was here, he'd be the just running comedy. He'd be the best. Oh, really? I haven't seen any sort of sign that anybody from that era would be the best. Now, I hate every single person from his era, so I could only... You know, I could only imagine that uh, he would be terrible now. He'd be doing ads. He'd be a fool, a buffoon. You know, as time has passed and all these guys have turned into the biggest letdowns of our time. You know, I've never seen anything this bad. So I could only assume he'd be terrible. And uh, but I don't know. But I also don't know if he'd be great. So I'm not going to go around saying he's so great. He's so great. You know who he reminds me of? Bill Cosby. No, he doesn't remind me of anybody. (laughs) Uh, They hold this. Bill Burr every year holds this benefit for Patrice O'Neill. I am an anti-benefit person. I don't believe in benefits. I don't like this idea. You get something terrible happen to you or your family, and then the world overpays you for it. I don't like it because I know it's never going to happen to me. And I don't like that at all. I don't like, here, for instance, uh, a man has uh, uh, got a Kickstarter going because his eight-year-old son was killed by a crazy murderer. 
And then the the none the news is uh, they raised eight million dollars for the death of the son. And I go, who get? Wait, wait, wait. Who gets the eight million? And they go, the da- the family. For what? Their son died. Okay, this is giving me motivation to kill my son. Eight million dollars <laughs> with the right marketing. So I don't like a benefit. What is Patrice O'Neill's family? Why should they be getting paid yearly after he's died? They didn't get paid anything while he was alive. It's not like, oh, Patrice O'Neill's family, they're so used to living what in What kind of general. lesson are you teaching these kids? That Why does Patrice O'Neill's <laughs> ex-wife, by the way, this would have been an ex-wife. I don't care who's in his family, they'd be denounced by now. Every year they get millions of dollars. Every year, millions of dollars. So it's like, Patrice O'Neill dies, and the family deserves millions of dollars off of this? Why? Because maybe he would have given them millions eventually? I don't understand the thinking behind it, so I hate it. <laughs> and I don't know why you can't have, why you need to be raising money. Can't you just hold a Patrice O'Neill holiday where you remember his greatest moments if you love him so much? Every year his family needs to get a cash out, a buy a payout? Every year. They held the benefit the first time, and it made like $893,000. You would think that's enough for this family. But nope, every year they come back and they want to beat that last year's number. And Patrice didn't even make any sticker art or light news themes. He, he did nothing. He ate pizza on stage every day, killing himself. You know, we always joked about him dying. I was very mad when he showed up. I think it was at the Lakeshore Theater in Chicago. And he sits on the stool and he goes, you got my pizza? You got my pizza? And he ate an entire box of pizza and just sat there on the stage eating pizza. And he's this big, sitting on the stool. He can't get up. He sits on the stool with this hat, eating slice after slice. I go, is anyone going to tell him that he's gaining a little weight? (laughs) You guys love him so much, but you just let him eat pizza all day. How did he die? Pizza! I'm not even kidding! He died that night from the pie. He really did. He died of like obese related illness. And it was also funny how big and fat he was. And then he died. And now we're going to have a benefit for the big, fat, obese man who ate himself to death, literally ate himself to death. I don't know why that's being congratulated. Family, your son ate himself to death. Here's another million dollars for some crooked ass black family who like they really don't need to be in the same restaurants as me. <laughs> okay. They don't need that cash. They've got enough. And it's not like they're not making money off this guy's death. They've been making money off it since he died. Where do you think all the money for his streams and all this nonsense that he makes t-shirts? They've made like $6 million off his death. That's too much. I'll let you get 800000 once. That's it for a death. That's good enough. Any more than that, it was worth it that your family member died. There's no other way around this. Any more than a million dollars per loss is worth it. So there should be no more tears after I see the dad of the Sandy Hook shooting sh- uh, suing Alex Jones for $1 billion. $1 billion should do the trick. It should be enough for you to go, I literally don't even know that nigga's name. Thanks for the money. (laughs) Whoa. Go Sandy Hook. That's what you should be doing after you win a billion dollars for your (laughs) shitty, gross son being executed. You should be so lucky to have that happen to you. I mean, congratulations. (laughs) Imagine what you could do with this billion. And imagine what Patrice's family have done laying around eating the same pizza that he died from, sitting around. I bet they've really kept the place nice with all the money, huh? I bet it's a dump. I bet you go see what they've spent that fucking benefit money on. It'd make you sick. You know who would love this rant? Who's that? I was just thinking about you and Anthony sitting together having a little drink. Oh, yeah, (laughs) because he's kind of on the same side as me. He would be like, so fucking true. Hey. (laughs) That's what I've thought since day one. I find benefits to be um, quite 
too much. We should have a benefit for Kumia now because he never gets invited to the yeah. benefit. It's his main dream. It's obviously Why? killing him. The only reason he went to the comedy yeah, cellar is because he was, everyone was in town. Well, he think about this. Lonely. I mean, the Patrice O'Neill benefit is every one of his friends. It's Jim Norton. It's the gang. It's all these fucking New York assholes that were all on Opie and Anthony every day. And now they're all hanging out, having the time of their life at the benefit. <laughs> and Kumi is sitting outside going, uh, Hawk, that's so sad. Uh, can I get in there maybe? So he decides he's going to go. He goes, you know what? This year, the, all my friends are there. He'll tell the story. You want to hear the story? Yes. You're going to fucking love it. <laughs> This is a milestone. I don't care if you heard this before. We got to play it for you. We got to mark this time. This is a good Kumia story. Here he goes. Latin or French, something like that. But I am persona non grata and uh, I was not invited back. Woo! And it was a personal thing between uh, Bill Burr and me and Bill's wife. And uh, not as sordid as I just made it sound. But... Mm. Um, so Remember, I go to the cellar. Hold on, this is important. And this is the second half of the story I told you about Patrice. Now I got to tell you about Bill Burr. What does Bill Burr have that we want? He's got one thing that we all want. No, it's not the money. It's not the fame. It's not the talent. The reason Kumia is not at this benefit is because Bill Burr has a black wife. And the reason people, there is a phenomena about this black wife of his because again it's like i told you it's if he showed up with a 65 year old lady just like sam tripoli you can't have a guy just to have an old lady that's a totally different genre of guy show up and everybody's just pretends that's fine <laughs> you know it would be like if i just introduced miss cleo as my new wife you would go this is crazy <laughs> but nobody f could figure out what to say when this happened so they were just like Oh, man, they're great together. They're great? What about how she looks? <laughs> Which is a thing, but I totally understand why nobody can make it a thing. And you can't say anything about it because it's crazy, right? But it really is a thing that needs to be fully fleshed out and understood and discussed. <laughs> and Bill Burr knows. That's kind of what fucked Bill Burr up. In my mind, Bill Burr's got almost a perfect score and then this black white whoop and it's been a shaky ride ever since because he knows he should have done a full stand-up special about can you believe i'm with this black lady like what the <laughs> me with this old black lady i mean you probably thought i was punking you you know who would you do gotta that? do that you know who would do that patrice no, who? I was going to say Bert. Bert would <laughs> say that about himself if he had a black wife. Yes. yes, yes, I think so. And I think Bill really, this has got weird. So Kumia, who is a complete, I mean, really, look at Kumia's Twitter. I We've never seen anybody more racist than Kumia. And I like to stop the clock and really let everybody understand he says the craziest things about black people. They're fully real. They are not jokes that I've ever seen online. I've never seen anyone go as far as him. <laughs> he'll late night on Twitter, he'll just be like, every N needs to be extinguished. These motherfucking black N. Like, really? So Bill Burr knows this. Thank God. This is what I've been trying to get Joe Rogan to know. You know, Joe Rogan just had this guy on a year and a half ago. Joe Rogan talks about him all the time, loves him. And you're going, how does Joe not know about his Twitter? How does Joe not know about all the underage girls and all these crimes that Kumia is committing? And we got to yes, get this and info. On the other hand, of course, I'm sure if Bill Burr heard everything you've ever joked about him, he wouldn't want you in me. the club either. Me? Yes. But he allows me in the club. He understands where I'm coming from. He understands. <laughs> but Kumia just. But yes, imagine this motherfucker is making fun of your black wife in a real racist way. Do you ever want to see him again? You kind of have to give up the possibility of... And good for Bill Burr for being one of the only idiots, not like Joe Rogan, or, you know, the only person who's not an idiot, I should say. Good for Bill Burr for going, no, this guy is despicable. 
and wait to hear what he did. Because Joe Rogan is sitting and going around. Oh, Anthony Cumi is remarkable. Oh, my God. He inspired me to do podcasting. I'm going to have him on the show. At least Bill Burr knows what we know. You know, nobody should be friends with Anthony Cumia. Not even me. Think about that. I'm friends with Hella Mark Harley, Shelvo <laughs> Pancakes, who other? Brendan Schaub, I'm even. But not Cumia. Cumia is a no-go for anybody. If you work with Cumia, and everybody who works with him knows exactly what he's done. If you work with Cumia, you're as bad as him. Uh, knowing what he's done. I mean, Kumia is where I draw the line. Kumia is bad. It's not just a fool. He's not redeemable. He can't make this better. He needs to end. You must. Believe me. Thank you. Did you okay. guys watch Succession last night oh, yet? God. Are we allowed to talk about that? Or do you Boris guys have to leave the No, room? that's too soon. Because I was just going to say, imagine Kumia's episode... Oh, wow. Yeah, no, don't say that. No, don't ruin that for them. <laughs> Succession, by the way. How boring is it? I don't think it's boring at all. I, like, hang on to every word. Don't you? You were always falling not asleep you, and not then you. waking up. I'm begging up for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me tell you what. That's let me why tell you what. Never get There's it. guys out there. There are guys out there who still think, like, a hot chick is, like, Angelina Jolie or Jennifer or, or uh, Pamela Anderson. And it's like they didn't, they're not constantly updated. Like, yes, Angelina Jolie was hot once. Pamela Anderson was hot once. You need to be updating that remark about them almost every five minutes. You can't just keep calling Angelina Jolie and Pamela Anderson hot. They are not hot at all anymore. They're atrocious. So when I see something like, uh, what was I talking about? When I see something like Succession, I go, a lot of people are remembering seasons one through three as being great. They take this break and now they're back. And now you still think they're really hot. It's rubbish. And I don't want you watching it. Thank you. No, I don't feel that strongly about it at all. But Succession this season, if you were thinking, hey, man, I'm falling asleep here sometimes. It, you are not alone. They don't know what they're doing with that show. Should have been canceled years ago. He's going to do that here. Let's get to Kumia's story. It's heartbreaking. It's everything you've ever wanted to hear, and it's pretty well told. Anthony Kumi, everybody. I think Amy Schumer was there, too. I saw her walk in. I think she went right downstairs. And her security guy. Now, who is Amy Schumer's security guy? Garrett? Cake boss? Ginger ale, Joe. I can't stand this. Close. Close. <laughs> Club soda, Kenny. There you go. Let's just watch. It's a movie time here. Club soda, Kenny. I just, this is going to take forever here. Is there a way I could cut this shortened down here? Um. You know what I mean? Click to he's like, talking about this club show to Kenny is his old bodyguard. Just click like two minutes ahead and see what he's talking okay. about. This is, <laughs> is his old bodyguard from when they did Opie and Anthony. And I guess this bodyguard now will do work for Bill Burr still. Security guard, not bodyguard. Security. So Opie and Anthony used to have this security man that they call club show to Kenny. Now club show to Kenny now works for Bill Burr. He also works for Jim Norton. I'm going to fast forward a little bit more. Let's listen to this. So Bill Burr comes in. Got okay. up a little bit. Here we go. Of quizzing the booth. Who puts on the Patrice O'Neill benefit every year? Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Well, if Bill Burr's in town and all these comics that did the show, they're in town. Where would they go in New York City? Oh, my God. Wait, oh, you didn't even know if they were going to be there? That is a thirsty, desperate ass loser move. So he hears the benefit happen that night and he goes, where would they go afterwards? Where would all my old friends 
and Bill Burr, if they were doing the Patrice O'Neill benefit in town, where would they all go? <gasps> and he goes to the comedy cellar alone to see if they're there. Wow. <laughs> it's sickening. Familiar place where they came up and the comedy cellar in New York City. So Bill Burr comes in and I'm sitting there. I see Bill and I'm not going to be a faggot. It was Bill Burr, by the way. It was not someone that looked like Bill Burr that I took a Don't picture listen. of or a video and didn't talk to or attempt to up. have some words with. So he I, knows that Bill Burr hates him. He sees Bill Burr sitting there. He decides he's not going to be a faggot. Like he says, he's going to go talk to him. I did attempt to have some words with Bill Burr. I was going over there to be sincere, to try my best to, as, uh, as Bobby Kelly said, bury this shit with Burr. Bobby Kelly told me that. He goes, could you bury this shit with Burr? So I'm like, look, we're both here. Let me bury this shit with Burr. I'll try Woo! it. Excited. I walk up to the table. Uh -oh. Oh, yeah. uh, he's sitting down. I, I kind of uh, used a chair to put my knee on to get on a, a Irrelevant. Level. I said, Billy, how, what's up? How you doing? Uh, uh, Dad! Who? Now I'm starting to think maybe this was not the best move. His dude wasn't dude. It was dude. Like... That's amazing. Like when he talks about white women, just disdain in his voice. <laughs> uh, what are you fucking talking to me? After the shit you said about my wife? <gasps> hey, Bill. First of all. Ooh, ooh, I got a southern. That is so good. He goes up to Bill Burr thinking, eh, Bill won't care. I'll get to reunite with all these guys. They'll all love me. I'll have a great night out. He just got there. To the comedy cellar, he took the train, he gets there, and he goes up to Bill, and the first thing Bill says is, Dude, after all the shit you said about my black wife? Oh, I mean, thank you, you Bill. I know, what did you think was going to happen? So that he was going to be as insincere and spineless as everybody else you work with? And just, nothing matters because you're all losers? Well, he's not as much of a loser as you and your other friends, Kevin Brennan and all these low lives that keep circling back with each other. You know, he's grown out of that. I mean, this is like the scene in the TV series that really hammers home how the guy is just completely out of touch. Yes. With what, or he's in denial. I mean, this is a great scene. I'm so glad he told the story. Let's hear some more. The fans are the ones that kicked that whole fucking thing off. Never said... Well, I didn't get that much out oh. before. Now, let me think. Let me ask the booth. Who else does Club Soda Kenny do security for? Jim Norton. Jim Norton. Very good. But I had seen Jim prior to that and spoken to him, and he was great. Funny fuck show. He's one of the loves of my life, Jim Norton. So that wasn't really an issue that he's done security for that. Now we have talked. Amy Schumer, she was in. I guess she was downstairs uh -oh. doing a, a set or something. And someone else that Club Soda Kenny does security for. It can't be Opie. No, he had <laughs> done security for the great Greg Opie Hughes beer show. Watch it on... Opie Radio. He's showing his face now and stuff. I know. Yeah. I guess ever okay, since uh, uh, Alex uh, uh, Stein okay. uh, did, uh, presented him, uh, he's now like, Don't okay, think, I can show him. He can't be face. telling so, the whole story here. I saw him either. in a restaurant. What do you mean? I want Bill to talk about this. I would love to hear Bill talk about this. And if anybody so knows Kumia if Bill had. up and was being so nice. And he was probably like wasted and stumbled. Oh, yeah. He, he like, probably hey, looked like a man. Bill. And then they were yeah, like, oh, and they're like, get this, this could guy. Get bad. Well, listen, he's going to tell the story about what happened here. 
It's coming um, up. <laughs> actually, at a bar just prior to this. Uh, pop up um, Anthony Cumia uh, Twitter oh my God, and look stop. at maybe the last. I'm such a fat. Okay. up there t chatting, trying security for Bill Burr. So when I was up there. He's saying that this uh, club show to Kenny, he notices that he's there at the Comedy Cellar. He's doing security for Bill Burr. And again, club show to Kenny and Kumia work together year after year after year uh, on Opie and Anthony. Okay. Here. They're t chatting, trying to bury this shit with Bill Burr. His security guy, club show to Kenny. Quite literally threw me out of the comedy Ooh. show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He chest bumped me out of the fucking place. Yes. I was not worthy to nope. bury the shit no. with Bill Burr. So and by yes, the way, he was chest bumped out. Out, as he described it. This is his description. <laughs> Imagine the real story is going to be so amazing when we hear it. He was just bumped out of the room immediately after trying to talk to Bill Burr. Thrown out of the comedy club. All his friends inside looking out the window. None of them coming out. None of them coming out to say, Kumia, I'm so sorry. Nothing. They're all inside eating Christmas dinner as the windows fog up. And he's outside, thrown out by his ex personal security guard. Fuck, that's he looks like pretty he's incredible. Lizard. Let's hear some more. By the way, that's why I never tried to bury the shit oh, with Bill Burr. Okay, yeah. In my drunken haze last night, it seemed like a good idea. Wow. Bobby <laughs> Kelly echoing in my head uh, You gotta bury the shit with Bird, dude, and get a bandolier. Kenny. The guy I fucking spent years with as it's one worse. of our security guys. That's bad. Chest bumped me, physically removed me. Didn't even nicely be like, listen, man, you got to no. just no. straight to physical. Go, go, go. Yes. Now you fuckers know. When I'm drunk, you cunts know I'm a magnanimous I fucking dick know. face. I'm kidding. See, that's part of the joke. I don't get drunk and belligerent. Yeah, I'm not right. a belligerent guy, especially when I'm trying to bury shit. I don't go. I didn't go. Uh, look, Billy Bear. Uh, man. Yeah, but you sober looks bad. You a little drunk is disgusting. I hate to break <laughs> it to you. You with any sort of inch of drunk confidence is repulsive because you look like you're going to hurt a girl, or we don't want you out having this type of fun. Feeling like you're one of the guys, the human beings of the earth at a bar. You're not capable. We don't want you drinking. Every time you've drunk, you've thrown a gun at a girl's head, bit her hand. God knows what also, else. Also, don't forget, there's that clip this week that everybody yeah. is sharing and <laughs> screaming. Yeah. We should play that, too. At Nick Fuente. And DeLorean! Probably woman DeLorean! Faggot DeLorean! Anything but man to didn't do that. And then I was physically yes. removed by Club Soda Kenny. Dude, I'm beside myself. Fuck. This is one of those stories where you go, eh, you probably shouldn't tell this story to anybody, bro. Because you know why you shouldn't tell these breakdown stories like this, where pe it's you're being uh, people liking you, or, you know, it's getting chipped away. Like, maybe the only reason that you even have any fans left is because they think you're still friends with Joe Rogan, Bill Burr. So if they're friends with you, it's probably not true about all your heinous crimes. And maybe they could like you, too. But once you start telling people, oh, yeah, Bill Burr hates me, then maybe Robert Kelly needs to start hating you. Right. Because why do they all not hate you if Bill hates you? So it could become a real and then your fans see, oh, Bill hates him. All these comics hate him. Oh, maybe he is this terrible guy. So you don't want to do that. It's not good marketing for yourself to talk about how all these people hate you. You know, when I come on this show, I show you, well, the comedians that I cover on the show, they're pouring out to me. 
Brian Redman. Uh, oh, don't Bobby forget to Lee. check if he emailed you back. Oh, yeah, let's see. You know, Brian Redman, Bobby, all the guys that we talk about, they're all reaching out to me. Owen Benjamin, I talked about his kids being in coffins, apparently. He loves me. <laughs> so, it, it, you know, it's um, you don't want to be telling people. Let's see if Redman got back to me. That's right. Brian Redman. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Damn. He must be in VR. Cross your fingers. It's 9.05 here. So, could be in VR. Okay, let's listen to some more Kumia pathetically telling the story that, you yeah, know, you don't really need to tell people this, bro. I'm beside myself. Just thinking. This has been on my mind that this fucking guy who we supported, paid, and enjoyed the company of for years... I was just another piece of shit yep. <laughs> in the way of yep. one of his paychecks. Even worse. Even worse. I was just another piece of garbage yes. that, face, that yes. needed to be removed because his paycheck might have been uh, getting upset that I would dare try to bury that shit with Bill Burr. And what was your idea of Barry? To go, no, nah, no, nah, I didn't say anything. It was the fans, like you said before. So Barry, it means you're just going to blame the fans, <laughs> saying they're the only ones who's made racist remarks. I love you. That's what you were going to do? That all, no, no, no. I'm glad that Bill Burr did not allow that to happen. So that's the story. You could hear more of that by searching Reddit. Should but we wait, play at this? At the end, he like screams. Oh, okay. There's a good we ending. should go to like 10 seconds before that. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Here we go. The ending. Look at him. And Keith Robinson oh. sitting across, he not saying shit. a joke, I guess. You oh. have to go back. Farther. With all I of have to go back farther? I think so. Okay, let's I see. just remembered he fucking yeah. disgusted. Oh, yeah. Here you go. This that is needed good. to be removed because his paycheck might have been uh, getting upset that I would dare try to bury that shit with Bill Burr. Listen. I am fucking disgusted. (gasps) Fucking disgusted. Fuck Bill Burr up his fucking ginger black wife ass. Yeah. (laughs) Fuck Club Soda Kenny. Okay, I think we'll end it right there. Right? <laughs> Very crazy stuff. Go see it. It's great that that happened. Uh, what a wonderful surprise. And then we've got just this one more, and then we're going to take a break here. What's the Kumia? Uh, oh, that is N-word just the tape. clip that has been going viral. Yeah, I know. Where is it? I mean. uh, just click the short version is good enough because the other one's like 30 minutes oh, long. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this short is... version. Here you go. This was Kumia streaming live the other night this is brand new (laughs) so maybe bill saw this yeah this is him streaming live from his starter apartment in new york city nick is being a with this system nick Nick. i can't get on every time fix your shit fuck nick wow (laughs) nick is this black guy poor kid Poor sweet little Damn. black kid. There it was. We're going to take a quick little break. i got to go back and back. We're going live. We're doing it. 